Welcome everyone to part three of this tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi mech robot in Blender. If you haven't seen the other parts, then definitely check that out. I will have a link in the description to the tutorial playlist. So in parts one and two, we modeled the head and we also modeled the neck. And in this part, we are going to be modeling the robot's body and also the backpack on the back of the robot. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel so I can keep on making Blender tutorials and Blender content, I'll have the link in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. And then one more thing before we start, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a 3D model marketplace where you can buy, sell, and even upload your own 3D models and preview them in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab's huge 3D model store. Use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, matte cap, textures, and more before you purchase. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. So let's start now by modeling the robot's body. So make sure you are in object mode because we're going to be adding a new object. So I'm going to press Shift C and Shift C is going to center this 3D cursor into the center of the scene. So I can now press Shift A and let's go to Mesh and I'm going to add a cube. And then I'm going to press Tab to go to edit mode. I can press S to scale and I'm going to scale this cube down a little bit. Now I want to copy the same modifiers because I want this body object to have the bevel modifier and the mirror modifier. So I'm going to press the tab key to go back to object mode and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the head object. Now to copy the modifiers, I can press Control L and I'm going to click on copy modifiers. And now this object here has the same modifiers. So it has the mirror modifier and the bevel modifier. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and I can press G to grab and we're going to pull this out here and connect it to the mirror and then I can kind of bring it back. Now if you go inside here, you can see that there's an extra face and so I want to delete this extra face in between the mirror. So to do this, you can click right over here to the face select and then I'm just going to select this face, select the face in the middle there, and I can press X to delete, and let's just click on faces. So I can press the A key to select everything now. Let's press three on the numpad for side view, hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe, and I'm just gonna start to shape this. So I'll press G to grab, I'm gonna bring this over, S to scale, and just kind of scale it down and stick it to the body, just get it to the correct shape. And you can see there's like a bevel here and a bevel here. We will add those bevels in a moment, but for now, just try to get that right there. And then this side of the cube also right there on the front. And then also bring it up so that the bottom is right there on the bottom of the robot. And then I'm gonna click right here to go to the vertex select. I can press the A key to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. I'm gonna drag a box around the top vertices. And then I can press G and Z and we are going to bring these up. All right, then I can press one on the numpad to go to front view. I can press the A key to select everything. And I'm gonna press G to grab. And I'm gonna bring this over on the X axis. And I'm gonna bring this right over here. So this is how big the side of the robot is, but I actually wanna bring it back a little bit because we're gonna be extruding that part out. So just bring it right back there to match that little cube right there. And then press three on the numpad to go to side view. I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe press A to deselect everything. And then what I wanna do is add a loop cut here. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut, and I'm gonna to click to add the loop cut, and then I'm gonna drag it a little bit farther down right about there. So you can see right there, there's that green line there, that is the Y axis in the center. And I want this loop cut to be just a little bit higher than it. So you can double tap the G key if you wanna change how high that is. All right, I'll press A to deselect everything, and then I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut, and I can add another one, and I'm gonna click and drag this loop cut right about there, place it right there. So there's a little bit of a space right there, and then right here there's a little bit of a space as well. So I'm gonna now navigate over here. I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view, and I'm gonna press three on the numpad to go to the face select, and I can just select this face. And then I'll press three again on the numpad to go to the side view. So I can now press E to extrude, and we are going to extrude this face out and bring it all the way back to the end. All right, and then I'm gonna navigate over here to the front and I'm going to select this face, 
hold down the shift key and select all of these other faces so all these side faces are selected, but not this back one here. I can now press 1 on the numpad for front view, I'm going to zoom in, and then I can press E to extrude, let's extrude this out to the side, and just stick it right there. So now if I navigate around, you can see this piece is just coming out of this bigger piece. And then let's add those bevels. So I'm going to press 3 on the numpad for side view, and let's press 1 on the top of the keyboard to go to the vertex select. Hold down the Z button and go into wireframe. I can press A to deselect everything, and then I'm going to press B for the box select. Just box select that little corner there, and I can press Control B to add a bevel, and then bring this out and place it there, make it fit the reference. All right, A to deselect, B for the box select, just box select those vertices, and then I can press Control B again to add that bevel and make it about that big and place it right there. All right, that is looking good. Let's press one on the numpad to go to the front view, and I wanna add a loop cut right here. So I'm gonna press Control R, click to add the loop cut, and then drag it up, and then place it right there. So it fits that cube right there on the front of the robot. Hold down the Z button, let's go back into the solid view, and then let go. And then I just want to go to the face select again. So I'm gonna press three on the top of my keyboard to go to the face select, and I'm just gonna select this face. And I also wanna select this face right here. Then I can press three on the numpad for the side view. I can press E to extrude and let's just extrude that out. Place that there and then I'm going to press 1 on the numpad to go to front view. Hold down the Z button. Let's go to wireframe and I want to add another loop cut going up and down right here. So I'm going to press Control R, left click, drag over, and then left click again to place that. All right, hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view, and then I'm gonna click right back over here to go to the face select. Let's just select this face, hold down the shift key, select this face, and then I can press three on the numpad for side view. I can press G to grab, and then just click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis, and I'm gonna stick it right there. And then just navigate right up there, you can see what we're creating, so we're kind of creating this little piece which is just kind of popping out of the front of the robot's chest. Now, if I press the tab key to go back into object mode, you can see there isn't actually a bevel there, and that is because of the angle limit on the bevel modifier, but I do want to keep the angle limit on because I will use it later to have some places not be beveled. So I want to add a little bevel here. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode, and just hold down the shift key and just shift select all of those vertices. I can now press control B to add a bevel, and I can bring this out. Just bring it out as big as you need so it doesn't make the bevel smaller. So drag it out to about there, place that there, and then if I tab to go back to object mode, I can then use the object context menu to shade this smooth. And when I do that, you can see there's something weird going on here. So to fix this, I'm just going to tab into edit mode, and then I'm going to click right here to go to the face select. So I can then select this face, and then hold down the shift key and select the little triangle, and hold down the shift key and select this face. And then I can press the F key, and that is going to make all of this just one big face. And I can tab to go back to object mode. But now if I kind of look around here in object mode, if you use the object context menu and shade this smooth, there is a little buffer right there because we added that extra loop there. And then also back here, you can see there's just a little bit of a weird shading issue. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode, make sure you're in the face select. I can just hold down the shift key and select these three faces, so the little triangle and the bigger faces, and I can press F and that's just going to make them one big face. And then right here on the front of the robot, I want to add a little square which is kind of being extruded out. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and just select this face right here. I can now press I to inset this face and I'm going to bring it in. And I'll just make it about that small. So then I can press E to extrude, I can just extrude that out a bit, and just place it right about there. Tab back into object mode, and you can see we just have a little detail there, a little sci-fi detail with an extruded cube. So let's navigate right down here to the bottom of the robot, and then I'm going to tab to go into edit mode. So I want to add a loop cut right here in the center. So I'm going to press Control R, and then I'm going to left click, and then right click so it stays in the center. And then I will press 3 on the top of my keyboard to go to the face select, and I'm just going to select this face, and then I can press I, and I is going to inset this face, and I'll bring that down, place it there, then I can kind of go to the side, and I'm going to press E to extrude, and let's just extrude this up just to add some more details right there, just like that. And then I also want to extrude these faces in, so I'm going to select this face here on the bevel, hold down the shift key, and also select this face, and I can press I to inset, and then you can see it's not connecting with the mirror. So you can press the B key and the B key is going to toggle that boundary and if for some reason it's not working you might need to press the I key again 
because I want the individual to be turned off and then I can press the B key. So I'm just going to bring this down and place it right there. Then I can press E to extrude and let's just extrude this back a bit and stick it about there. And then I'm going to select this face here in the center and I want to extrude it back again. So I'm going to press E to extrude and we're going to extrude this back even farther. So now we have some pretty cool sci-fi detail there on the front of the robot. All right, and then I'm going to press three on the numpad to go to side view, and I want to work a bit more on the back here. So I want to add a loop cut right here. So I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut, click, and then I'm going to drag over, and I'm going to bring this to kind of about here, and then click to place that. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe and let go. I can press A to deselect everything, and then I'll press B for the box select. I'm just going to drag a box around these vertices here, and then I can press G to grab and bring this up on the Z axis and I'm going to stick this about there. All right, hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view. Now right over here, I want to cut out the mesh and kind of give it a little slanted area. So to do this, I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut right here. I can left click and then right click so it stays in the center. And then I want to delete these faces. So press three on the top of your keyboard to go to the face select. I can hold down the shift key and select all of these faces. And then I'm going to press X to delete and let's delete the faces. So I can now fill faces in here. So I'm going to press one on the top of my keyboard to go to the vertex select. Select this vertex and then hold down the shift key and I'm going to select all of these other vertices. So we have four vertices. Then I can press the F key and that is going to fill a face there. So I can now select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select these other vertices here. So we have four more and then I can press the F key to fill a face there. So now we have some cool sci-fi details here with like a little slant and like a bevel. And then I'm going to navigate right up here and I want to add a hole kind of on the bottom of the robot. So I'm going to go right here to the face select then I can select this face and then hold down the shift key and select this face then I'm going to press the I key to inset the faces and remember you can press B to toggle the boundary and I want the boundary to be off and I'm gonna make this a bit smaller and place it right about there so this should be just a little bit bigger than this piece right here then I can press E to extrude and let's extrude this back and then we're gonna add some cool little sci-fi mechanics and sci-fi details inside this extrude area. So I'm just going to select one of these faces and then I can press shift D to duplicate and I'm going to scale this. Let's scale this on the Y axis and make it longer. And I'm actually going to go to the side and bring it down on the Z axis. And then I can also press G to grab and I'm going to push it into the mirror so that it is smaller. Then I'm going to press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that right up there into that area. And then I'm just going to select one of these faces again. I'm just going to select this face back here. I'll press shift D to duplicate and bring it down on the z-axis and let's press s to scale we're going to scale this on the y-axis and make that smaller and i can press g to grab and let's stick it right up there and kind of stick it in the hole and i'm going to bring it up even more kind of bring it over a little bit and bring it up on the z-axis and then i can press e to extrude we're going to extrude that up as well maybe select this face and bring it up a little bit even more all right so now with this face still selected i'm going to press shift d to duplicate Let's bring this face over on the Y axis and bring it over to the other side. All right, and then I'm going to press G and Z and I'm gonna bring this down and bring it down to about there. And then I can press E to extrude and let's extrude that up. All right, and then double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected and let's press Shift N to recalculate the normals. Some of those cubes needed to be recalculated. And then right here on this back cube, I'm gonna select this face. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it. Let's scale it down, make it smaller. And I can also scale it on the X axis to make it smaller. And let's just scale the whole thing down. Now you can see that it's connecting with the mirror and I don't want it to be connected to the mirror. So let's turn off the clipping button right here on the mirror modifier. And then I can scale it down and then I can just turn back on the clipping button. I can scale this down a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna make another cube here. So I'm gonna press E to extrude, just kind of extrude that up there. And then I'm going to select this face again and I'm going to press control seven. So so if you press seven, that's gonna to go to top view. So if you press control seven, that's gonna to go to bottom view. And just make sure that is selected. And I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate this. And let's also bring it down on the Z axis. So G to grab, bring it down the Z axis.
this and just kind of bring it over here. And let's also press G and Z, bring it much farther down. And then I can also scale this and I'm gonna scale this on the Y axis because I wanna make this more of a cube shape and I can bring it in here. Okay, bring it down a little bit and then I can press E to extrude and let's extrude that up. And then I wanna add a bevel right here on this edge. So I'm gonna click right here to go to the edge select or you can also press the two on the top of your keyboard. I'm just gonna select this edge and then I'm going to press control B. So control B will add a bevel. Let's just bevel that out, place that there. And I think those kind of bevels, those sharp bevels look pretty cool in sci-fi. All right, and then I also wanna add some pipes which are inside here. So in edit mode, I'm gonna press shift A and we're gonna add a cylinder. And then real quick, let's turn off the clipping so it won't be merged with the mirror. I can scale it down, so press S to scale and G to grab. Just kind of scale this down and move it to the side and then I can turn back on the clipping button. So I'm gonna scale this down even more and then I can press R to rotate. Let's rotate it on the X axis and I can type in nine, zero and enter. And then I can press S to scale. Let's scale this on the Y axis and I'm gonna bring that out and then just kind of fit it there, bring it down on the Z axis just like that. And I'll scale it down a little bit more, kind of bring it over to just make sure it's sticking into both of those cubes. Then I can press Shift D to duplicate, click with your mouse wheel to constrain it to the X axis, and I'm gonna stick that right there. All right, let's double tap the A key to select everything. I can press Shift N to recalculate the normals, and then I can press Tab to go back to object mode, and then using the object context menu in object mode, let's just shade that smooth. So now I have some little sci-fi details there back inside the robot. Let's press tab to go back into edit mode and then I'm going to select this face right here We need to go to the face select to do that though So click on the face select click on this face here And then I can press shift D to duplicate this and let's bring this up and then bring it up here And again, let's turn off the clipping press G to grab and S to scale and then we can turn the clipping back on So I want to just stick another cube right here So let's bring it down on the Z axis or actually bring it up on the Z axis and stick it into the robot And then I can scale this down and kind of bring it over All right, so now I can press G and Z and let's stick it into the robot Then I can press E to extrude and let's scale this up and then I can press E to extrude one more time, bring this up, and then I can scale this, so hit S to scale. Let's scale this on the X axis and make that a bit smaller and maybe bring it down a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. And then right over here, if I navigate over here, I wanna add some little boxes here on the robot right there. So I'm just gonna select this face. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it. And let's press G to grab, just kind of bring that out and make it pretty long and kind of bring it closer to the robot. Then I can press E to extrude. Let's extrude that back. And then I wanna add one more cube up here. So select this face. I'll press Shift D to duplicate and S to scale. Kind of bring that over, maybe bring it down on the Z axis. And then I can press E to extrude, and we're gonna extrude that up. And then again, double tap the A key to select everything, and I'll press Shift N to recalculate the normals. All right, so let's navigate right back over here to the front of the robot, and I wanna add some more details here. So I'm going to select this face right here, then I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate this, bring it up, and I can press one on the numpad to go to front view, hold down the Z button, go to wireframe, and I'm just gonna bring this up so it matches with the reference, which with that little triangle area there, which is on the front of the robot. And then I'm gonna click right here to go to the vertex select. I can press B for the box select, and I'm gonna middle click and drag just to deselect those vertices. And then I can press G to grab, and I'm gonna bring this over, bring those vertices there, just place them there. And then let's also press three on the numpad for side view. I can press L with my mouse hovered over that object, and I can press G and Y and bring it back. And then I can press E to extrude, and we're gonna extrude that back into the robot. Hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view, and that's looking pretty good. And then I'm also going to go back here to the face select. I'm just gonna select this face, and then I can press Shift D to duplicate, bring this down, and I can press one on the numpad to go to front view, and then hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and let go. And I can press G to grab, and I'm gonna stick this right down there. We're gonna make these little kind of vent objects. So I can press three on the numpad for side view, 
press G to grab, make sure that's the correct size. And then I can press E to extrude. Let's extrude this up and place it there. Then I can press E to extrude again, place that there, but I wanna bring this back. So I can press G and Y and we're gonna bring that back. All right, hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view. You can see what we've made. And let's also press G and Z and kind of bring it down just a little bit. All right, and then hover your mouse over the object and press L. We can press one on the numpad for front view, hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe, and I can press Shift D to duplicate, hit Z to bring it up, place it there, and then Shift D again to duplicate, hit Z to bring it on the Z axis and place that there. All right, hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view, and that's looking good. And then let's also again double tap the A key to select everything, and I'll press Shift N to recalculate the normals. All right, press the A key to deselect everything, and let's press Control S again to save the project. And now I'm going to be creating the backpack on the back of the robot. So to create this, I'm going to first select this face right here, and then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it up on the Z axis, and then I can press 3 on the numpad for side view, press G to grab, and S to scale and just kind of fit it to the top of the backpack. So right about there, kind of scale that down. And then I can press seven on the numpad for top view, hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe, and I can press G to grab. Let's bring this out on the X axis and stick it right there. And don't worry about those beveled edges, we will do that later. And then press three on the numpad for side view again. I can click right here to go to the vertex select. I'll press A to deselect everything, B for the box select, just drag a box around those vertices. I can press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel to constrain them to the Y axis and stick that right there. So then press B for the box select, we're gonna box select the entire thing here, and I can give it some thickness. So I'm gonna press E to extrude, we're gonna extrude this entire thing down and just stick it right there on the bottom of the backpack. All right, so I'm now gonna press seven on the numpad to go to top view, and I wanna add a loop cut. So I'm gonna press Control R and add a loop cut right there. So click, and then drag over, and then click right there. You can see there's a little bevel there, and so that's where I wanna add the loop cut. So then I can press one on the numpad for front view, and then press A to deselect everything. I can press B for the box select, just drag a box around the corner of that backpack, and I can press G to grab, and then bring it down on the Z axis and just stick it right there. All right, hold down the Z button, go to solid view so you can see what we've created. So we added that loop cut right there, and then we just drop that part down. And then I wanna add a bevel on this edge as well. So I'm gonna select this vertex, hold down the shift key and select these other vertices. Let's press three on the numpad for side view, hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe and zoom in here. And I can press control B again to add a bevel. We're just gonna bevel this out and just fit it to the reference. All right, hold down the Z button, go back into solid view. You can see we have a bevel there. Although you can see that bevel is actually going through that. So I'm gonna press control Z to undo this. I'll press Control B again, and this time I'm just going to make it not quite as big, so just place it to about there. And then double tap the A key to select everything, and I'll press Shift N again to recalculate the normals. And then right over here, I want to add a bevel back and forth here. So I'm going to select this vertex, hold down the Shift key, select this vertex. Let's press 3 on the numpad for side view, hold down the Z button, go into wireframe. And actually, this might be easier if I press 7 on the numpad for top view, that's better. So I'll press Control B to add a bevel. I can just bring that out. And then I wanna bring this over a little bit. So I'm gonna press B for the box select. Just click with my middle mouse wheel, click and hold, drag a box around those vertices and let go just to deselect that. And then with the remaining selected vertices, I can press G to grab, click with my mouse wheel, bring it over on the Y axis and stick that there. All right, that is looking pretty good. So I'll go back to the solid view and that is good. Now, if I press three on the numpad for side view and hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe view. If I zoom in there, you can see that there is kind of a little edge, which is kind of coming up and then going back down. And so I want to add some loop cuts here and then bring that up. Now, if I try to press Control R to add a loop cut, you can see because there's those bevels there, we're not actually able to add a loop in there. So I'm going to press Escape to undo this. So to fix this, I'm going to hover my mouse over this object here, the backpack, and then I'm going to press L, and that's going to select the linked vertices. Then I want to hide everything else, so I'm going to press 
Shift H. So Shift H is going to hide everything else, but it'll just keep the selection. So I can now press three on the numpad and that's going to go to the side view. So I can now use the knife tool to cut into that object. So I'm going to press K for the knife tool, and then I'm going to also press the C button, and the C button is going to toggle the cut through. You can see right down here, we went over this in part one of the tutorial series, you can see right down here in the corner it says cut through on, but if you press the C button, that's going to toggle it being on or off. Now I want to make sure it is turned on because I want to cut through the entire mesh. And then I'm also going to press the Z button, and that's going to toggle between the orientation lock being on and off. So just press the Z button and make sure that orientation lock has that capital Z right there. And you can scroll your mouse wheel to kind of move that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is click right up here, drag down, click there, and then hit enter. That's gonna add a cut all the way through the mesh. And then I wanna do that one more time. So I'm gonna press K again for the knife tool, and then again, press Z and C. And then we can just click right here and then drag all the way down and then click there and then hit enter. So if I hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view, navigate up here, you can see what we've done. So we've cut those loops through the backpack. Now I wanna move this loop around. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and then just select that loop. And then I can press three on the numpad to go to side view and I can hold down the Z button and go into wireframe. So I can now press G to grab and I'm gonna bring this over on the Y axis and just stick it right here so that the bottom of the loop there is at the starting of that bevel. And then hold down the Alt key, select this loop. And again, I can press G to grab. Let's bring this over. So bring it over on the Y axis and stick it right there. So it's at the starting of that bevel. Now, because we added loops in here, I can now press Control R and you can see we're able to add a loop. So I'm gonna press Control R and I'm gonna click, drag over, click right there so that this loop is right there at the top of that bevel. And then again, let's press Control R, click to add that loop, drag over and place it right there so that it's right at that bevel. So I can now press A to deselect, I'll press B for the box select. I'm just gonna box select these two vertices here which are in the center. If I hold down the Z button, go back into solid view, you can see what I'm selecting. So I'm just selecting these vertices down here. So I'll press three on the numpad for side view, Z and go to wireframe. And then I can press G to grab. I can bring this up on the Z axis and I'm gonna stick it right there. So I can hold down the Z button, go back to solid view and you can see what we've created. So it looks kind of sci-fi and cool. Now right here, I wanna add three little cubes to add some sci-fi details. So I'm gonna click right here, go to the face select, and then I can select this face. And then I can press three on the numpad for side view. Let's go also into the wireframe view. And then I can press shift D to duplicate. I can press S to scale, scale this down a little bit and kind of place it. And then I can also scale it on the Y axis and make it much smaller and kind of bring it over right there. All right, and then I can press one on the numpad to go to front view and I can press G to grab and let's bring that out just a little bit. So bring it a little bit farther so there's a little bit of space there. And then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude this back in and then hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view. You can see what I've made. So I'm just gonna hover my mouse over the object and press L to select the link vertices and then let's press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this over on the Y axis and stick that about there, kind of in the center. You can also use the reference by going into the wireframe view on side view, just kind of fit it to the reference. And then I can press shift D again and bring that over. All right, hold down the Z button, go back to solid view, that's good. But then again, I need to select everything, so press the A key to select everything, and I can press Shift N again to recalculate the normals. So let's press Control S again to save. All right, so the next thing that I wanna add is kind of a little storage box on the back of the backpack. So to do this, let's select this face right here, and then I can press the seven on the numpad for top view. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate. Let's duplicate this out, and then I can press S and we'll scale it in and just fit it to the reference. Let's also press three on the numpad for side view. Hold down the Z button. We're gonna go into the wireframe and just match it to the reference, and I need to scale it down on the Z axis, make that a little bit smaller. All right, so I can now press one on the numpad for the front view, and I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude this 
back into the backpack. And then I'm gonna click right here to go to the vertex select, press the A key to deselect everything. I can press B for the box select, and we're just gonna select those vertices. And then I wanna add a bevel, so I'm gonna press Control B, and we'll just add a bevel right there. All right, hold down the Z button and we'll go back into the solid view. That's looking good. And then underneath the backpack, I wanna like extrude out a little area. So I'm going to press three on the numpad again for side view. Let's go into the wireframe. I'm gonna press Control R. Control R is gonna add loop cuts and I wanna scroll my mouse wheel out so there are two loop cuts. And then I can left click and then right click so it stays in the center. Then I can scale these, so I'll hit S to scale, click with your mouse wheel, constrain it to the Y axis, and I'm going to scale them about, about this big, and that way those loop cuts align with the reference images, so I can extrude out that little area there. Let's also navigate right down here underneath this, and then hold down the Z button and go into the solid view. And I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut right down here, click, drag over, and then place that there. So now what I can do is click right up here to go to the face select. I can just select this face and I'm going to press E to extrude. Just bring that down, place it there. We can also press the one on the numpad to go to the side view, kind of see how that is. E to extrude, bring that down and then G to grab. We can bring that back on the X axis and stick that there. All right, that is looking good. Let's double tap the A key again to select everything and I can press Shift N. Shift N will recalculate the normals. Now I wanna add a little latch to the storage box. So I'm going to select this face. I can press Shift D to duplicate. We'll bring it up on the Z axis and then I can scale it down. Make it pretty small and maybe scale it out on the Y axis and make it a bit longer. And then I can bring it down a little bit and let's also bring it out. So G to grab, bring it out on the X axis and then I can press E to extrude and we can extrude that back in. All right, and then I'm also gonna click right here to go to the edge select and I'm just gonna select this edge and I wanna smooth it out a little bit. So I'm gonna press Control B to add a bevel, scroll my mouse wheel and add a few cuts, place that there and then just press the L key to select that object, and I can press Shift N to recalculate the normals. So back in edit mode, I wanna add some little details here on the very back of the backpack, so let's do that. So go right here to the face select. I'm just gonna select this face, and then let's press Shift D to duplicate, bring this out, and then I wanna turn off the clipping right here on the mirror modifier, so I can press G to grab and pull it out. And then I can click on this to turn the clipping back on. Then I can scale this down, and let's also press Control 1, because one will go to front view, so control one is gonna to go to back view. And I can scale this down and also scale it down on the x-axis and make that much smaller. And I can stick this right here. I'm just gonna stick it right here on the backpack and I can bring it a bit closer. Then I can press E to extrude and we can just extrude that back in. All right, and then I'm going to select this edge right here or select this face right here. And again, I can press Control-1, that'll go to the back view. And I'm gonna press Shift-D to duplicate and let's bring this over. So click with your mouse wheel to bring that over. I'm gonna stick it about there and then I can press E to extrude and bring that out and place that about there. Then I can scale this, so I'll hit S to scale, and let's bring this down on the Z axis and make that a bit smaller. All right, just like that, and then I can double tap the A key, and I'll press Shift N to recalculate the normals. And also I'm gonna select this face right here, and I wanna make it a bit thicker, so I'm gonna bring it out on the X axis just like that. All right, and then I'm going to press Alt H because I want to unhide the other objects that we hid, so now we can see everything. And then right back here, I wanna add a little sci-fi box, so I'm just gonna select this face right here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate, bring this out, and I can bring it on the X axis, and I can also scale it down on the Z axis. We're just gonna bring this forward a bit and scale it down. And then I want to bring these faces back, so I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and select all of these faces. All right, that's good, so just select those faces. I can press G to grab, and let's bring them back on the Y axis a little bit, just like that. All right, that's pretty good. So I can now select this face, let's bring it forward a little bit, and then I can press E to extrude, and we're gonna extrude it back. And then also right here, this edge, I wanna give this a bevel. So I'm gonna press the two on the top of my keyboard or click right here to the edge select. And I can just select this edge. And then I'm going to press Control B to add a bevel. And again, you can scroll your mouse wheel to add more loops there. And I'm just gonna make that pretty smooth, make that a bit bigger and place that there. And then again, select everything with the A key, and I can press Shift N to recalculate the normals. I can also select this face. 
So go to the face select, select this face, and I could bring this out a little bit, so I'll bring it back. So I'll bring it out on the X axis and make that a bit longer. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna create is the storage tanks, and I'll be putting a storage tank here, and also another one right here, and then we're also gonna be adding some pipes, which will be going into the backpack. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and we are going to add a cylinder, and make sure you're in edit mode of the body object when you do this. And again, we're gonna turn off the clipping, we're gonna bring this away from the mirror modifier, and then I can click on the clipping and turn that back on. So I can scale this down, let's scale this much smaller, and then I can press three on the numpad to go to the side view, press G to grab, bring this over. I can hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe. And I'm just gonna scale this down and just match it up with the reference. So I'll scale that down and stick it right there. And then I can also scale this on the Z axis to make it much bigger. So I'll bring that down scale it down a little bit smaller and just kind of match it up to the reference and then you can see that there's a bit of a bevel so it kind of just like comes in and it comes in on this other side here so to do this i'm going to first press the seven on the numpad to go to top view and you can see this is way over here so i need to press g to grab click with your mouse wheel constrain it to the x-axis and i'm going to stick it right there and just match it up to the reference now what i'm going to do is hold down the z button and go back into the solid view and i'm going to navigate right over here and so I just want to select this face and then hold down the shift key and select this other face so now what I want to do is extrude these out and scale them up but before I do this I want to click on the transform pivot point and I want to change this back to median point okay so I can now press E to extrude then I can press S to scale and that's going to scale them but I only want to scale them up on the Z axis so I can hit Z and then they're going to be scaled away from each other and I can just scale that up and then stick that right there and then I want to scale them in so that they are matching that bevel but I want to scale them in from their own origin not the origin that's in the very center so I'm going to click on the transform pivot point and I'm going to change this back to individual origins and then I can press S to scale and we're going to scale that in and place that about there all right I'm going to go back to the solid view and that's looking very good now I also want to add those little straps which are connecting the tanks to the backpack so to do this, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just select right there, and that is going to select that ring of vertices. So I can now press 3 on the numpad for side view. Let's go into the wireframe view again. I can press Shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this up on the Z axis. Then I can scale the entire thing up, and then I also want to scale this down on the Z axis to make it much smaller. And I can bring it down here and just kind of match it to the reference, scale that up a little bit. So I now want to give it some thickness because if I go back into the solid view, you can see there isn't any thickness. So I'm going to press E to extrude. Then I'm going to press S to scale that, but then I don't want to scale it on the Z axis. So I can press Shift Z. And you can see now it's not scaling it on the Z axis. And I'm going to bring it inside the tank place that there and then I can also double tap the A key to select everything and press shift N to recalculate the normals and also I want to shade it smooth so tab back to object mode and then use the object context menu to shade that smooth all right tab back into edit mode and I'm just gonna press A to deselect everything I can hover my mouse over this strap and press L that's gonna select the linked vertices and I just want to scale it down to make it a bit smaller then I can press 3 on the numpad for side view and I can press shift D to duplicate Let's bring this down on the z-axis and put one more strap there. All right, so now I want to duplicate this and put one over here on top of the robot's back on the backpack. So press the L key to select all of those linked vertices. And then I can press Shift D to duplicate, bring this up. I'll press R to rotate. And you can see it's rotating by the individual origins. So I'm going to press Escape to undo this. I want to click right here, and I'm going to change this back to the median point. And then I can press R to rotate. And I can type in 9 and 0 and then enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. I'm also going to hold down the Z button, go back into the wireframe. I can press G to grab and I'm going to stick this right here and kind of match it up with the reference. And then I want to delete this side because I just want to move this side over. So I'm going to go right here to the vertex select. So I'm going to press B for the box select. I can click and drag with my middle mouse wheel and then let go. That's going to deselect everything that was in the box. 
Then I can press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel. We're gonna bring that over on the Y axis and stick it right there. Press seven on the numpad for top view and you can see we need to bring that over. So just hover your mouse over the objects and press L to select the linked vertices. I can press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel and we're gonna bring that back right there. All right, let's go back into solid view. Make sure that's all looking good. That is looking nice. All right, so I now want to create some pipes which are going from the side of the tanks into the backpack. So to do this, I'm gonna press the tab key to go back to object mode because I wanna do this in a different object. Why I'm doing this within a different object is because we are going to use the curves in Blender. And a curve object and a mesh object can't be joined together unless you convert one to the other. So I'm now gonna press Shift C. Shift C is gonna center that 3D cursor there. And let's press Shift A. And then I wanna to go to curve and I'm just gonna add the BZA curve. All right, now I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode, and then I can press G to grab and move this over in edit mode. And why I'm doing this in edit mode is so that the origin point is in the very center there. Now I wanna give this a mirror modifier, so let's click on add modifier, and I'm going to add the mirror modifier. So now you can see that is mirrored over to the other side. Let's press seven on the numpad for top view. I can press G to grab, and then S to scale, and R to rotate. Let's type in nine zero and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And I'm just gonna bring it over here. And let's also bring this down so it's right next to the tank there. Now, if I tab to go back to object mode, you can see it doesn't have any thickness. So right now you're not gonna be able to see it in the rendered view. So let's give it some thickness. So we're gonna go right here to the object data properties of the curve. And then we wanna go right down here to geometry. And then under the bevel, we wanna go to this depth value. And I'm gonna make this depth value bigger to make it thicker and now you can actually see that curve and it looks like a tube and then I also want to turn the resolution up to make it a bit smoother so let's take the resolution value and turn that up to like a value of 8 so now it is more smooth going around so I can now tab into edit mode and we can select these handles right here. I can press R to rotate and G to grab and we're gonna stick these handles right in here. So let's put them inside that pipe there so it's connecting. Then we can select the other one and I'm gonna press seven on the numpad for a top view. Hold down the Z button, we're gonna go into wireframe and I can just rotate this and kind of make it fit the reference. Let's also press three on the numpad for side view. I can press G to grab and then R to rotate, and then double tap the R key. Double tapping the R key will do the trackball rotation. I can kind of rotate this up. All right, go to front view, maybe rotate that over a little bit. Hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view, and then I can press E, and E is going to extrude this out, so it's going to extrude out the curve and it's gonna have another handle. So I can rotate this handle, and I wanna stick this handle right in here, so stick it right in the backpack. I'll press seven on the numpad for top view again. Uh, I wanna hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe so I can see what that's looking like, just see where that pipe is. I wanna just stick the pipe right there. Let's go back to the solid view. Just kinda of rotate this. We can also scale the handle down, so if you wanna scale the handle down, you can do that, and I'm gonna stick it right there. All right, that's pretty good. Now I want to have some little metal piece where the tube is going into. So I'm going to press the tab key to go back to object mode. I can select this object, the backpack, and I can tab to go to edit mode. So now what I'm going to do is hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices. Hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop of vertices. So I can now press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this piece up and we're going to bring it over. I can press three on the numpad for side view. Hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe so I can see the reference better. And I'm gonna rotate this, so R to rotate. Let's type in nine, zero, and then I also need to type in negative, so it's rotating by negative 90 and hit enter, or just click to place that. Let's press G to grab, we're gonna bring this down. And then I wanna hold down the Alt key and just select that loop of vertices. And I can press E to extrude. Let's bring it down on the Z axis and stick it inside the backpack. And then hold down the Z button, let's go back to the solid view. And I'm gonna just hover my mouse over the object and press L to select the linked vertices. And then I can just kind of bring this to the right spot, right about there, something like that. Maybe bring it over a little bit. And then I also wanna have one more, so let's press seven on the numpad for top view. Let's go into the wireframe, and then I wanna put one more over here. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate. 
let's bring it back on the y-axis and stick it there. All right, and then we'll have another tube going into that one. So I can hold down the Z button, go back to the solid view, and let's tab to go back to object mode. I can select this object again, this is the curve object, and then tab to go to edit mode. I wanna select the end of the handle, and I'm gonna press G to grab, and I'm just gonna bring this up, and then also bring it over a little bit, and just make it fit that little metal piece there. All right, now I wanna duplicate this and put it over there. So I can just select one of the handles, I think I'll just select this handle, and I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate, and then R to rotate. Let's rotate it on the X axis and I can type in 9, 0 and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees and just stick it there. Then I can press E to extrude. Let's extrude this up and I need to rotate it and bring it over here. And you can see this is actually rotated the wrong way around. So I just need to select this handle and rotate that around and that's looking better. All right, so rotate that, maybe scale it down a little bit. And we're just gonna hand place it right down there where the tank is. And let's select this handle. I can press seven for top view. Let's go into the wireframe view. I can rotate this and scale it and just kind of stick it into place. Let's extrude this out and scale it down a little bit. And then I just wanna rotate this over. We're just gonna bring this in. It's probably easier to do back over here. And let's just stick it in there. So just stick it into that little metal circular piece, just like that. All right, tab back to object mode. That's looking good. So let's press Control S to save. And then one thing that I wanna do, I just wanna select this object here. And right down here under the geometry bevel, I do wanna make the depth just a tiny bit smaller so they're not quite as thick. So I think that looks better. All right, let's press Control S again to save. So in part one of the tutorial series, we created this little light here on the robot's head, and later on we'll be adding an emission material to kind of make this glow. But I want to take this little light here and I want to put it right down here in the front of the robot. So I'm just going to select this object and I'll tab to go into edit mode. Just press the A key a few times to make sure everything is deselected, and I'm going to zoom in here. So then I can hover my mouse over the objects and press L, and L, that's going to select the linked vertices, and I want to duplicate them and make them their own object. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's bring this down on the Z axis. And then to make the selection its own object, I can press P and then I want to separate by selection. So then just press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can select this object. Now, if you wanted to, you could join these two objects together, but the problem with that is that then this would be mirrored, and I don't want this light to be mirrored, I just want them to be on this side. So I'm just going to tab to go into edit mode, press the A key to select everything, and I can press 1 on the numpad for the front view, I can hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe, and then I can press G to grab, and I'm just going to bring this down here and stick it to the reference. Then I can press Shift D to duplicate, let's bring this down on the Z axis, place it there, and Shift D to duplicate, again hit Z to bring it on the Z axis and stick it there. Let's now press 3 on the numpad for the side view, and I need to press B for the box select, just box select all those lights, and I can press G to grab, bring them back on the Y axis, and just stick them right in there. And I'm gonna stick them a little bit more forward, and then I can press A to deselect everything, press B for the box select, just box select all those vertices right there, and I can press G to grab, bring it back on the Y axis, and stick it inside the robot's body. All right, so there we go, tap back into object mode, and that is looking really good. Let's press Control S again to save. So then right over here, I just wanna add like four little cubes. So with this object selected, I'm gonna actually tab back into edit mode. And then in this object's edit mode, I can press Shift A and we're gonna add a cube. I can scale the cube way down and let's just bring it forward. And I can press one on the numpad for the front view, hold down the Z button. We're gonna go into the wireframe and I can just scale this down and just stick it right there. Just stick it right on the front of the robot. We can also go to the side view with three and I can bring this back, so G to grab, click with your mouse wheel, and we're gonna bring that back right there. And then press one on the numpad for the front view, and I can press Shift D to duplicate, bring it down on the Z axis, place it there, and then Shift D to duplicate, bring it down on the Z axis, one more there, and then Shift D to duplicate, again, bring it down on the Z axis. All right, let's go back to the solid view, tab back into object mode, and that's looking very nice. All right, so then right over here, I wanna add a little bit of sci-fi details right up here, kind of right above the robot's shoulder. So I'm gonna select this object again, and let's press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then I wanna go right here to the face select, and then I can just select this face, and I'm gonna press the period on the numpad to zoom over to this. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate, 
Let's also press three on the numpad for the side view. I can hold down the Z button. We're gonna go into the wireframe. And I'm just gonna scale this down and stick it right here. Scale that down even more. And then I can also press S to scale and let's scale this on the Y axis and make that less big. All right, just like that. And then I can press one on the numpad for front view. G to grab, and we're gonna stick that right inside the robot. And then I can press E to extrude, and let's extrude that out. Then I'm going to press E to extrude again, and I'm gonna bring that out even more. And why I'm doing this is so that I can kind of bevel the edges. So I can now press three on the numpad for side view. And then I just wanna scale this new face. So I'll press S to scale. Let's scale it on the Y axis and make that smaller. So I can go back to solid view. You can see that's what we've done. So we've extruded it out and then kind of scale that in. Then I can also press I to inset that. We're gonna make that quite a bit smaller. You can compare it with the reference image on the side view, maybe make that a bit smaller. All right, go back to the solid view and I can press E to extrude and let's extrude that back. All right, so then I wanna make one more. So I'm just gonna hover my mouse over the object and press L to select the linked vertices. And then I'll go to the side view again with three. Let's go into wireframe again, and I can press Shift D to duplicate, click with your mouse wheel, bring it over on the Y axis and stick that there. All right, that is good. All right, so we are almost done with modeling the robot's body. The last thing that I wanna do is I want to duplicate those bolts and put the bolts all around. So let's press the tab key to go back to object mode. I can just select this object and then I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'll press the A key to deselect everything and I'm just gonna hover my mouse over this object and press L, that'll select the linked vertices. And then I wanna duplicate this, so I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it here. And then I wanna separate this into its own object. So I'm gonna press P and then I can just click on selection. I can tab to go back to object mode. I'm just gonna select the bolt object and then I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and select this body object. Then I can press Control J and that's gonna join them together. So then I can tab into edit mode, just press the A key to deselect. I can just hover my mouse over this object and press L to select the bolt. And then I wanna use the same method. So what I'm gonna do is click on the snapping feature right there. And when I use the snapping feature, now if I press G to grab, it's gonna move that bolt around. So now I can just stick the bolts all around the body. So I'll press G to grab, put that right up there. We'll put one bolt there. I can also press Shift D to duplicate. We'll bring that down on the Z axis. Let's stick another bolt there. And then Shift D to duplicate, put one there, and Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna put another one there, Shift D, and we're gonna stick another one there. Let's also press Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna stick another bolt right up there. And Shift D to duplicate, stick one there. And then I wanna duplicate another one. Let's put another one right up here, kind of in the corner, in the corner of that. And then I'll duplicate this and put another one up here. And then also navigate down here. I can duplicate this and we're gonna put another one right there. And then also right down here, let's duplicate this and put one on the bottom of the robot there. And also right over here, Shift D to duplicate. I wanna put one in this corner right there and then duplicate this and put another one in that corner there. And then I can duplicate this and we're gonna stick another one right here in the bottom in that corner. And Shift D to duplicate, bring this one up, G to grab. We're gonna stick one right there. Of course, you can add these wherever you want. I don't wanna to add too many though. I don't wanna overdo it, but just some here and there. Let's duplicate another one and put one there as well. And then on the top here, I wanna add a few more. So let's go to the top. I can press Shift D, Shift D will duplicate that, stick it there. We'll duplicate another one and put one there as well. And right over here, more at the front of the backpack, I'm gonna duplicate this one and I'm gonna stick that right there. Let's also go down here to the bottom of the front of the robot and we'll duplicate some more bolts. I'm gonna put some bolts around these little edges here. So put ones around those edges. All right, that is good. And on the front, we could do some as well. So I think I'll just like duplicate this and put one there as well. And I'll duplicate this one and let's stick another one right there as well on the front. Tab back into object mode. Let's press Control S again to save. And this is it for part three of the tutorial series. So the modeling of the robot's body is finished. So in the next part, in part four, we are gonna be modeling kind of like the hips or the shoulders of the robot. And then we're also gonna be modeling the upper legs. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you've been enjoying this so far. And when the next part is released, I'll have the link in the description and a card right up there on the end screen. And again, if you'd like to help support what I do, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. But thanks for watching and I will see you in the next part.